Indian No More, Chapter 21, Thanksgiving Day Despite what had happened at school, Thanksgiving went way better at home. Early Thanksgiving morning, Daddy shook our bed and flipped back our quilts. Get up or you'll miss it. I rubbed my eyes as my feet touched the cool wooden floor. We'll miss what? I mumbled. Hurry. Pee Wee and I dragged our half-awake bodies into the living room. The smell of a roasting turkey filled the air. And now here comes Popeye flexing his muscles down Broadway in New York City. The television, that previously dead box with spilled innards, displayed a giant balloon of this cartoon character, complete with corncob pipe and anchors tattooed on his arms, squinting one eye. So many people were needed to hold that balloon close to the ground with long ropes. You got the television to work, I shouted. I'd known Daddy was smart, but I hadn't known he was that smart. Chitch poked her head in from the kitchen just in time for another balloon to pass across the screen. It looks al it almost looks like you're right there, she said, holding some unpeeled potatoes. Pee-wee and I grabbed our cornflakes and sat on the floor to watch the rest of the parade. We hollered toward the kitchen every time a big float or another balloon passed in front of the camera. A group of dancers called the Rockettes performed for the first time at the parade. Wow, could they kick high? Our eyes never left the screen. The announcer said this was the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. We watched until the parade ended, and a white-bearded man named Santa Claus and his reindeer stopped in front of Macy's department store. Can we watch something else? I asked. Ask your father, Ma Mama said. I haven't the foggiest idea of how that to work that thing. Daddy went over and turned the channel knob around. He stopped on a station with cartoons, which looked like moving comic books images to me. I sat spellbound and didn't move until noon when Mama demanded we come and have dinner. John, you give grace, Mama said finally, sitting down at the table. All righty, Daddy said, putting his down his fork. We give thanks for good food, good meat, good God, let's eat. John! Regina, would you please lead us in prayer, Mama said in a huff. Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts, which we are about to receive from thy bounty. Through Christ our Lord, amen. I looked at everyone around the table. Chitch, are you okay? Just a little tired. I'll lay down for a bit after we eat. She seemed tired more often now. For the first time since we left Grand Ronde, food covered almost the entire table. Turkey, mashed potatoes, gravy, stuffing, corn, peas, and red jello with whipped cream. My favorite dessert. Since we didn't celebrate Thanksgiving back home, Miss Elsie shared her stuffing recipe with Mama, so she'd know how to make it. It was delicious. And that's when I knew we weren't poor anymore. No one who ate like this and owned a television could be poor.